Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to This Won't Last Long, the weekly podcast where I talk all things my creative life, a little bit of my personal life, and uh, just like media that's out there. Today, the media that's out there has been Umbrella Academy Season 3. Really excited, really excited to talk about that um, soon. But first, um, I'd like to talk about um, a channel update. I'm going to usually start with these every podcast, I think. So yeah, like what I've been working on, the end of the scenes, stuff like that. So I've been working on, um, I mean, I, I my, main, nah, my main thing is that I start with, is that I work on YouTube stuff, so I'm working a lot on that. I mean, of course, I've done like little things for Twitch. Um, like in like recently, I did this thing called sh- Treat Stream, Treat, which is where you can send me food. Um, obviously, like my location isn't fucking on there because that would be very very bad. But yeah, um, I think I have a good menu. Um, yeah, that that's just something to add. Obviously, I don't think fucking. Someone's gonna order me food with 12 followers, but you know, figured I'd add it just for future purposes. Um, and then I'm trying to add throne gifts, which is kind of a similar thing, but it's instead of food, it's just gifts in general. So I'll have that as well. Other than that, um, I worked on this a new Just a Thought. Uh, that's the title for it. It's a series that I have on my YouTube channel. It's basically just, if you guys know Ben Morton, um, he's he's mainly known on TikTok, but he also has this series on his YouTube channel. Um, he's better known as Ben in the Trees. Um, he has a series on his YouTube channel called um, A Brief Exhale, and um, it's similar to uh, this one. That that's why it's that's why my that's why that series was inspired by it. With him, it's like brief excel so it's basically with me it's like i give my thoughts on various topics like for the first two um, episodes i did like just i did like just review stuff um like there was a stranger things 4 volume 1 review and then there was a review for the movie lightyear for the third one this week i decided to work on a new one which was a little something something a little different um it was like my showing off my collections of things which i thought was cool yeah there's like movie tickets that i showed off like i collect all my movie tickets funkos stuff like that it's pretty simple like it's literally just me talking um but with him like with ben it's like he it's like the same thing but it's um what was i gonna say like a brief exile means it's brief so it's like I think the most I've seen one of the episodes has been like eight minutes, but with me that's like not. It's not what I do. Like, the latest one was nineteen minutes. The first one, the just the Stranger Things four one, uh, review was like oh, like under half an hour, like just under it. So I mean, usually I don't make long form content because it takes like a long time to fucking export, but sometimes it doesn't, and usually. I mean, I just, it's pretty simple, like, I just keep my laptop on, and then, like, watch YouTube, or eat food, or whatever, like, because usually it's late night that I work on stuff, I don't, for some reason, like, my creativity usually sparks at, like, fucking, like, the average time would be, like, maybe 1.30, but most likely, like, 2 a.m., um, unless it's something like this, where I can just, like, do it, like, this podcast, but, oh, yeah, um, I recently like edited my schedule so it's like because usually not schedule but like I have these lists of ideas for Michael creates in general because that's like what I'm naming my whole like every all my platforms like like Michael creates because my main one is YouTube which is called Michael creates so it's like I'm just gonna name my main thing Michael creates um 
that was probably obvious, but I don't, I don't know why I explained that, but yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, like, I have these whole list of ideas for the YouTube channel, for Twitch, uh, for TikTok. I think that's it. Um, and like occasionally Twitter, but I usually just think of those in my head. And it's usually just for promoting stuff anyways, like, like when I'm live and stuff. So I had like a couple skit ideas. One was like a chicken mask and it's, <laughs> and it like takes over the person's life. It's inspired by like Unis Honest and stuff. So I thought that was a funny idea. I have a story about that. The, that chicken mask was actually, I have a funny story about that. It was $30. <laughs> and I'm using it for one goddamn video. <laughs> it's the dumbest. It's the dumbest idea. Oh my god. I mean, if it pops off, then it'll be worth it. But that took so long to get. That chicken mask. Oh my lord. It, um... I went to, it was after I hung out with my close friend Thomas, probably my closest friend I would say, um, right now, but yeah, Thomas, and I went to a lot of stores in the plaza near my school, um, we weren't at school or anything, because obviously it was summer, but it was when summer was first starting, but I think it was after exams, but yeah, it's like, uh, he just lives near the school, but yeah, I figured I would try to find the chicken mask, <laughs> and I asked the lady at like one of the, like dollar stores or whatever that's in that plaza, um, and I was like, do you have like a chicken mask, and she seemed like foreign, and, or like not, like not white, so I don't think she entered. Like she clearly spoke English, but I don't, I don't think she understood what I meant. Because, I mean, obviously, another form that that would mean would be, like, face mask. So maybe she thought I meant that. Uh, but, yeah, it was kind of embarrassing. But then I just, I figured she just didn't have it anyway. Um, it took a while to get that. And then after that store, I tried to find another one at... Or like a chicken mask at another ten dollar store next door, but um they were closed and then I tried to find it at like kind of grocery stores, they didn't have a chicken mask. And then that entire plaza didn't have a goddamn chicken mask. And then I was like, Well, maybe I'll try to find it online. Amazon had like had them for like twenty five. That was too much at the time with how much money I had. God it, like <laughs> <laughs> it's just like two days of like research um and stuff like that and like walking around shit took a long time man like uh, long time yeah that took a while and then i just decided like maybe ebay <laughs> and then they had one um so that was good that was that skit idea and then i finally found an ebay and it shipped today i think so that's good that it shipped today, but it's like, um, I don't know, it's like $30. I mean, I'll, I'll get like repaid for that eventually with my money and stuff. So the second one I had, um, will probably only make sense to like high school students. Um, the people like that, like kind of my age. So uh, I'm going to do like this skit. And think about different people at my school. And like how embarrassing the person is, or like different like types of people at my school type thing. Um, so I, I thought that'd be funny. And I'll probably do that with the same friend that I mentioned, uh, Thomas. Because um, he obviously we go to the same school. And then... So that'll be fun. Funny. Um, I don't know when I'll do that. He just got back from camp, so... That'll probably be a while from now when he's free next. Because he also got COVID. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that sucks. He got COVID, so I'll probably ask to film that next time I, you know, hang out with him. Right, yeah. And then the other thing was the dress of thought. And then the other thing, the other idea was to do, was to do this, like, choose your own adventure 
kind of series on my YouTube channel, and it was inspired by who was it? Uh, Markiplier. Um, with in space with Markiplier. Um, so I'm excited to do that, and then the idea for the the idea that I had to do on that on that list was like it's a scene from it. And obviously, I won't say anything because that would be spoilers. But that's gonna be fun to make. I actually realized that I didn't explain what the list is, um, or like how I edited my ideas on my list. So it's basically I kind of like put all the ideas on the main ideas list that were kind of easy to do, or not easy to do relatively, but like uh, per se, but like easy enough that it would be one idea and then I'd be done with it, kind of like one-off videos, uh, with the exception of like additions to s ongoing series, like like I said earlier, like the recent addition to the Just a Thought videos. But yeah, um, that took a while to explain. But yeah, that was my channel update. Moving on, um, I'll talk a little bit of my personal life since the last podcast, which was July third. Um, this is obviously a quicker section of the podcast than um, channel update, but so basically, I was at a cottage for a couple of days, and I'll get into that. Um, in the next, uh, section, but, yeah, before that, and kind of after that, so speaking of working on things, I wrote a book, um, a long time ago, I finished the rough copy on paper, January 4th of 2021, uh, sorry, 2022, <laughs> 2022, uh, so basically, I was working on that for a long time, and then before that, kind of like how all classes, like, you know, Christmas break, some before summer break, have like, I mean, usually not summer break, it's exams, but like, sometimes Christmas break, if the teacher's nice enough, you have like a little celebration thingy. Well, basically, we had that, and during that, my English teacher from semester one, um, mentioned like I was talking about my book to somebody to one of my friends at the time and then she was saying oh I could help you edit it I published a children's book and like I could help you with publishing and like editing and stuff and I'm like that's super nice um yes and then I kind of emailed her it was like it was like kind of a one-sided thing between me and my emails to her for a long time until kind of like like, early June, where I, like, where me and my friend met up with her in a hallway. Um, we didn't meet up with her, but, like, we saw her in the hallway while exiting the school on our way to, like, hang out. And basically, she, like, I, I had no choice but to ask her, because I was, like, I just really wanted to fucking know. But she, yeah, it, I, and then and we saw her in the hallway, and she was like, oh yeah, right, well, uh, I've been super busy. Yes, yeah, so basically, she was saying that she had a, she's had a whole, like, it wasn't, I don't think it, I think she was, like, finished it at the time, or maybe not. I think she was finishing it at the time, early June, but it's basically, like, a whole document that she was working on full of feedback for my book and my rough copy, because I transcribed the rough copy from paper onto Google Docs. Um, so yeah, there was that, and then she said I would have the whole document shared with me by the end of the uh, year, like, at end of the school year, and so basically, like, the end of June, and then basically she was saying, like, yeah, just that, and then I emailed her, like, after, well, school ended, and then she was, she didn't email me back, so waiting ever since then. Um, I mean, like, I know teachers earn to paid and shit, and it's a lot of work, and maybe, like, she needs a break from working all the time, but it's been 10 days, dude, can you just... <laughs> and it's kind of annoying, but, like, I get it, because she didn't have to, but she did do it, so it's like, where's my document? 
lady. Um, but I mean, I get it though. Like, I mean, like, it, and also in retrospect, like, I don't have a time limit for this um, book to be due, right? It's my own choice. Yeah, uh, I guess she can just take her time because I don't need a certain due date for this book. But other than my book, I've just been kind of like, and then I've been reading as well. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I mean, I don't, like, I don't do much other than my channel stuff and, like, exercising, like, just random, like, daily stuff. Like, regular daily stuff, but, right, yeah. Uh, reading, I've been reading Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy as well as um, the, the third volume to the Umbrella Academy graphic novels. Um, both are very cool. I'm kind of nervous for, like, the time limit that I have on the, and the, the I'm kind of nervous for like the time limit that I have on the books because they're from my school library and I have them until the first week before grade 12 uh, starts so kind of scared for that because Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is like a long ass book it's like 780 pages and I'm almost halfway so I need to read like th 390 pages almost um, or a little bit above that. Um, yeah, with the books, I guess I'll just have to work on my time management with, like, reading and stuff like that, so. That's kind of annoying, but, I mean, reading is fun, though. But, anyway, yeah. Um, and, and excited for Thor, seeing Thor, Love, and Thunder tomorrow. That's, I mean, I know there's a lot of mixed reviews out there, but honestly, um, I'm really excited. But yeah, just to, just to conclude on the personal life section... Uh, yeah, really excited to see Thor tomorrow. I got a new Thor shirt, which I can see, which you can see in the new video I released to, early today, actually, yeah. I got the shirt. Um, I was wanting my sister to do my makeup for tomorrow, kind of like a lightning, like, blue kind of thing for Thor on my eyes with eyeshadow. But I'll probably do that myself, because she's not here, apparently, which I learned earlier. So, yeah, that's annoying, but I do it myself, and then I can't do eyeliner for the life of me, but yeah, I, I won't do the eyeliner. <laughs> I could try to do my nails, but I'll, I, I'm not good at, I'm not great at it. I should probably try to get someone to do that. Maybe my mama, she's home. Yeah, but, well, it'll be a fun day. And then maybe I'll try to vlog it. I don't know. Maybe I'll try to, maybe I'll try to vlog tomorrow. A little bit. I was seeing this YouTuber. I was, I've been watching this YouTuber for uh, this past like, week. Named Grayson's Projects. That's on YouTube, and um, she has like a kind of vlog channel called Grayson's World. Yeah, that that um, that about does it for my personal life. Um, other than just being at a cottage for a couple days, which is a separate section. Um, I was at a cottage for a couple of days from July 3rd, no, 4th, to the 6th, yeah, the, the morning of the 6th. So, um, I basically just did my work in a different location. Um, I filmed some stuff which I'll put in a vlog kind of style, like, video kind of thing. Um, I'm editing, I'll probably edit it after I end this, to be honest. But, I mean, that's pretty much it. I just read and I didn't exercise much other than kind of just walking around. Um, it was a very nice area. Um, Crystal Beach, and you all have been there. I, I did watch all of Umbrella Academy there. I mean, I watched the first two episodes at home. It was kind of funny with that, because... And uh, yeah, it was kind of funny with that, with the first two episodes, because I tried to record a reaction for YouTube, uh, kind of binging the season. And then I formatted my card on my camera, and I completely fucking forgot that the footage for me reacting to those two episodes was deleted. So that sucks, but I kind of just moved on from it. Actually, in respect, gave me more time to do other, to work on other things. So that was actually good. Pretty, that's pretty much it with the cottage, honestly. And then just the food was good. Um, yeah, it, it was really beautiful. I'll, I'll probably talk more about the cottage on in my video. 
on my vlog video, but about it. But anyway, down to the nitty gritty of it. Um, now to talk about Umbrella Academy season three. With Umbrella Academy season three, people were saying that they don't really like it, and that's like the weakest of the seasons. But to be honest, I I really um I really didn't think so. I thought. It was very good. I think it was like I thought it was very consistent with the rest of the show. Cause I find every season not to be better, but like to be kind of equal, to be honest, than the previous season. So yeah, starting with episode one, um, I really liked. Uh, actually, I don't think I'll like go like chronologically. I think I'll just go like. No, I should have planned talking about this. I'll try to go chronologically. Okay, so episode one, I really liked the dance scene. Um, I really liked how five and everyone, like, didn't figure out... Oh yeah, also, fucking spoilers for Umbrella Academy season three. Um, that was kind of implied, but yeah. It was very good. It was very good how they, how the team didn't, like, figure out the apocalypse straight away. How they just kind of relaxed for a few episodes. How they slowly introduced it with the Sparrow Academy, and I like the Sparrow Academy, I, I mean, kind of like Stranger Things, I'm used to new characters, like, dying straight away, not straight away, but like, you know, like, new characters that were introduced that season, like, dying, so it was kind of, um, it was, I was kind of used to it with, and by that point, when, um, a lot of the Sparrow Academy died, and how it was just Ben who was left. So I found that like good because that means it's the original Umbrella Academy left with uh, Ben here now. So and Hargreaves, um, Reginald. So that was cool how they didn't figure it out straight away, and it gave much more time with the characters. So it was that was very cool to see because. If this was like a movie or something, or like a series of movies, you like this show, you wouldn't have enough time with characters to grow and change the way they do, even though it's a story like that takes place within like a month, with it within three seasons, still they change each time, um, and it's a very different story to the graphic novels which I find I find cool um, because I just went straight into this show when season one came out blind um, not knowing any of it I just oh this looks cool and I ended up loving it and being in love with it the show so that was really cool and I just it's just like it's such a cool concept too like just being with apocalypse every time such a fast-paced like story and but at the same time it gives you so so much well time with them so I found that concept really cool because you don't um yeah like I said you just it, it gives you so much god I'm repeating myself so goddamn much. what I'm trying to say is that I really appreciate this story with the show is so character focused because without it being character focused um you actually go into the reality of it and how silly the story is like some time agency dressed with fucking uh like animal masks um like um kids with powers like it's they're like in in the show embraces that silliness that crazy that craziness um in so many ways and I, I i watched a video the other day from i think screen rant and i found it really cool how it was like a video on comparing what's new from the show and what's accurate to the uh comics or the graphic novels and the character lila and a couple other characters were new from the show. I find that really cool because Lila is such a good, complete Dago in such a way, like, because they're so crazy and they're so, 
broken that it's they, they complete each other in a crazy kind of messed up but loving way um it's like it's like that trope in movies and shows where characters who aren't meant for each other complete each other like characters who shouldn't be together are together and they and they work and and they make it work um kind of another example of that is Hopper and Joyce from Stranger Things. Um, that's another example of kind of couples who like um, shouldn't work, but they do, or like make it work, even though like it's it's a struggle to make it work. And it's it's a really good story this season. Um, but there's the Kugel Blitz, which is a new apocalypse. I really like I was saying, yeah, the Kugel Blitz is it was a really cool. Apocalypse this time around because rather than kind of like you know meteors or stuff like that, it was this like growing like ancient power that they unleash like a time paradox, and um, it makes you it really makes you want to like ask more and like know more about this power that this apocalypse is having on the world. Yeah, and then the the mom kind of thing about like the robot mom thinking it's thinking the apocalypse is like some ancient power like god was really funny <laughs> um, and i found that funny and i found how like most of the umbrella academy died or sorry sparrow academy died from it kind of reinforced how the how powerful the apocalypse was this season Um, which was a was a thing yeah, which is a thing I found interesting. Um, in terms of the characters in the Sparrow Academy, I mean, we were supposed to hate them because they were gonna die. So, like, I I wasn't really attached to them because I hated them all, <laughs> mostly, except Ben because I I knew a little bit of old Ben was still in him, even though it's a different timeline. So I was kind of attached to Ben because it's Walt Ben. But, um, wasn't obviously attached to the new characters. And then with, with the Umbrella Academy, obviously it was, it was, I was attached, like when Luther, um, temporarily was killed in the second last episode, I literally said, no, like, I'm at, I'm at TV. <laughs> and... I didn't believe it because I was like, no, that, that that didn't happen. It'll it'll be fine in the in the finale. And thank God it was. Uh, same with same with Klaus, because um, I mean I knew he couldn't die, because that was that was also a really cool thing this season with Klaus and uh, Reginald like teaching him, because Reginald was actually nice this time around, um, even though. It was he's very selfish like he always is because his whole goal was to get back to his home planet i guess i think that's what the ending implied like to save his home planet and like get rid of the get rid of earth um because at the end it showed like at the very end it showed like a planet where reginald was still alive and he had his wife alive and uh kind of like like all the buildings said his name, like Hargreaves and plastered in lights and just clearly he was like a rich billionaire there. And so it's probably an alien planet, which is really cool. So hopefully I was researching season four after and it was saying that like, um, if they were to do a season four, it would be the last. So I'm sad about that, but I mean, a lot of my favorite shows are fucking ending. Umbrella Academy, Stranger Things, uh, The Flash. Like, a lot of my favorite shows are ending, which is really sad and heartbreaking, but... I can always pirate them or watch them on Netflix <laughs> until the day I die. <laughs> or maybe there'll be spinoffs, you know. Stuff happens. <laughs> kind of like that. Um, but yeah, I mean... Um, the, the characters were great, other than, like, the, the characters did what they were supposed to do, man. And the characters, yeah, like I was saying, uh, 
do what they're supposed to do. You know, Allison, it, it really sucked with Allison. But yeah, the, the characters that were supposed to be hated were hated. Maybe it wasn't intentional, but like, I really hated them. Like, I know I was supposed to, maybe I was supposed to feel for Allison. Maybe that's how they wrote her, but I didn't, man. Like, at first I found it sad, but then, but then like, when she was like kind of rapey with uh, Luther, I was like, this isn't okay. <laughs> and I just didn't like her anymore. Maybe they'll redeem her in season four, but I don't know. I don't know if I can forgive her for what she fucking was doing with Luther. Yeah, and then, and then Victor's, uh, or Vanya's uh, transition into Victor with the actor for Vanya, um, transitioning to a, a guy, um, I found really good for her character because the reason for that was that Sissy, she found out that Sissy died, um, in 1989, and that that was also a cool explanation for how, like, um, how everything was caused this time around, like, um, like with Harlan, Harlan's introduction was awesome also, like, with the music, um, and everything, um, so it was a really cool explanation for that, because he, like, he, he was trying to find... Uh, Vanya at the time and then he felt her mom and and like all of their moms which I thought was really cool because it really gave a reason to not like Harland and to have have him kind of be the the villain um unintentional but still the the villain so I found that kind of intriguing and new this time around to have not an evil cause of the um, paradox or apocalypse or whatever, but to have like a unintentional evil this time around. So I thought that was really uh, interesting, and I mean, at first, like I didn't even know who he was. You know, it, it was very intriguing to like, why are they, why are they, um, why are the filmmakers like? holding the camera on this guy who is he who is he like it, it was very intriguing and it made you wonder and i mean i saw reactions like real rejects and people like that and like automatically people were like harlan and i'm like how did you like i don't even know how people like got that straight away um maybe i was just focused on like other things in the story to to really care about that guy until obviously his reveal but yeah, and then just, like, Allison, Allison's choices, I, I really didn't, like, I, I just hated her, man, and, and maybe if, if, um, if the maker's intention, if the writer's intentions with her character this season were for us to feel for her, that was a bad choice by them, because obviously I didn't. And a lot of people didn't, because a lot of people fucking hated her with all of them, with all of their being. So, same goes for um, some of the sparrows. Like with, like with Ben, people were complaining a lot about with Ben's like stick up his ass the whole season. Um, I didn't have a problem with it because I knew that like some there was like a soft part of him like deep down so i didn't really care you know or no yeah that was a bad choice by them and it's just like it was really cool how yeah hated allison um i kind of i didn't expect allison to be the one that reginald was talking with in that scene but yeah that was really is a cool choice how okay let me let me backtrack yeah, with Victor and Allison, it was kind of a shitty choice, like writing choice to. Do. Honestly, I'm I'm kind of defending the writers here. The choices with Allison were bad. They were bad writing choices. The choices with pretty much everyone else were great. Um, I mean, you couldn't really have the Sparrow Academy kept alive because I mean that was the whole point. That that like they were really just a plot device, you know. So. I didn't I didn't really care about that. They were cool characters, they had cool powers. Didn't really care though. 
for them. The choices with Reginald made sense for his character. The choices with pretty much everyone else other than Allison made sense. And with Lila, I really loved her because you got to you got to really feel for her because you got to even with the guy from the kid from Euphoria being in this show briefly for um, um yeah that's it with the characters and with Ben I with with Ben I found it really I found it really cool with the post credit scene how I think it was the good Ben that was back in this timeline or just like back alive I don't really understand it but I'm sure they'll un, uh, answer that question um yeah with Klaus and Reginald Reginald was teaching Klaus how to use his like immortal powers which which I found really interesting and in the like they, they used him so much um, this time around, Klaus. You know, it, it was amazing how how well he was used this season. Because usually he's just oh he's the ghost guy. He he does the ghost things. But this season they really explored the immortal side of his powers, and um, no, I, I find that really cool. Uh, really, really amazing. And really cinematic too, with the with the change of um, what was it, the the change of aspect ratio for the what was it, like like for the when the Klaus like was dying, which was really I find that really interesting, and really like inspiring too, like being an aspiring filmmaker, I find that really cool, how the aspect ratio kept changing every time with that. But yeah, I mean overall, just just a great, just another great season. Um, I can't wait for season four. And maybe more stories, like like spin-off stuff like that. And um yeah, just to conclude overall, just a great season. I, I liked how the season was a bit different as well, with kind of a slow a slower pace in terms of story. Cause it always feels like that with Umbrella Academy. It never feels like like the day. And it was it, it just like with Umbrella Academy it always feels like you know, you binge it, and then it doesn't really feel like time passed. But with with this season around, it felt like you actually got time to to spend in that world. It didn't feel like like they were spending a day or two fi fixing an apocalypse. It felt like um, like ten different days, even though it wasn't. But like it was just it was it was very inspiring as well with being an inspiring filmmaker. Like I was saying, all the writing choices and filmmaking choices that they had with the season is very inspiring and um I just really just really love that so yeah that, that was kind of all with umbrella academy season three i don't think i'm missing anything all right if you're on youtube let me know your thoughts on umbrella academy season three below and this has been this won't last long and bye bye